Hello again, viewers, and greetings, fellow space travelers. This is Thorn of Night, and welcome to episode 27 of my bee breeding guide. In this episode, we are going to be going over past the Veiled Branch again, and this time we're going to be playing with the Supernatural Branch of Bees. Now, this branch adds three new kinds of bees, the Charmed, Enchanted, and Supernatural. Ooh, it's all glowy under the rainbow. That's kind of cool. Um, and in this branch, there is something to note. But first, uh, the bees are added by magic bees. They, they have no effects. They're pretty standard bees. They have some minimal tolerances to temperature, and I think maybe one from... Humidity. I'm not sure on that. I'll have to check here in a second. Uh, but uh, they they require flowers. They're just basically run-of-the-mill bees. Except they have special output for their comb and whatnot. But specifically, and I... That's supposed to say supernatural. I will fix that. Uh, supernatural bees breed better when the moon is in its waning phase. And the way to tell, other than looking up, and if you're in a uh, Mistcraft age, uh, there's tip, there's a full moon right there. Um, let's see here. I thought for sure there were other moons. Typically, there's multiple moons, and it's hard to tell which one you're supposed to go by. So the way you can tell is by crafting one of these things called a jade moon dial. You're going to need some green dye, either cactus green or just green dye, uh, some nether quartz, and a redstone to get one of these. And what you do is you put it in your hot bar, hold it, and... Ah! So that's not even the main moon. The actual moon that's right that it is right now is the new moon. So it's, it's invisible anyway. I couldn't have seen it. But that's how you can tell the, uh, the, the moon phase. And the output from this branch includes something called Otherworldly Comb. Uh, Otherworldly Comb will give you some beeswax and honey drop, but it also gives you this magic wax, which has uh, several applications, not, not really uh, worth going into for, for the purposes of this episode. But um, the Supernatural Bee has... A special output called the unusual pollen and it makes these things called bee collectors jars which I went through I believe in episode 6 of this series if you want to take a look at that it's basically for for using the effects on a drone without having to spin to princess but uh, that's that's what that is and let's go ahead and hop in and take a look at the actual breeding I am here in a n another Mistcraft Age, and by the way, uh, you can go examine this. There's one moon. There's another moon. Uh, I thought there was a third one. There's a sun, a sun. Anyway, uh, you can download this map to examine it yourself if you so choose. I will be putting the link in the description below. Uh, this is in the Feed the Beast mod pack called Unleashed. So you will need Feed the Beast to get this working properly because there's a whole bunch of mods. I think 120 mods that I'm running in this right now as part of the Unleashed mod pack. So there's a bunch going on and I think you'll really enjoy it anyway. So go get Feed the Beast. But enough of that. The first bee in this uh, branch is called the Charmed Bee and it's a level 5. And what I mean by that is... It is five levels removed from any uh, hive bee or, or level one basic bee that you can get. Uh, and the reason it's a level five is because the Eldritch, which is one of the components of it, is a level four. And the Cultivated is a level three, but level four is what I'm going by to get the level five and so on and so forth. But the Eldritch bee is from the Veiled Branch, this one. And if you uh, need to know how to make the Eldritch Bee, you can either go watch my Veiled video, or you can uh, download this and hop it through the book and go look at it yourself and do some experiments. But it also requires the Cultivated Bee, which is from the Apes branch, and that's through this book here. But let's look at the Charmed Bee. Let me get on the ground so I stop floating everywhere. 
The Charmed Bee got a princess and a, a drone out of that one. Uh, it took this one four generations. It's going to take you more or less. It, uh, it's all based on probability, so uh, don't be surprised if you get it on the first try. And also don't be shocked if it takes 10, 15, 30 attempts. It's all probabilities. But let's uh, let's compare this guy to a purebred one. A couple differences there. A difference there. Nothing too big. It's almost a purebred. Wow. All right. I will put these here for you to examine further if you wish. But let's look at the output from a typical charmed prince or charmed queen. You will expect to get two drones out of your efforts and very little comb five of those no comb whatsoever but uh, i do have an example of what happens if you run a stack of that uh the uh the, the otherworldly comb almost called it supernatural uh in a centrifuge you can expect to get a stack of honey drops about a quarter stack of the magic wax and about half a stack of the beeswax. But let's move on to the next one called the Enchanted Bee. It also requires an Eldritch, so you'll, you'll need plenty of those. And it requires a Charmed, which you just bred there. And I've got some stock for you to fiddle with if you wish. But let's see here. Enchanted. Excellent. It's the princess once again. Uh, one generation, so that wasn't too hard for this one. Let's see here. And that one's also pretty close to a purebred. That's kind of nice. So I will put these in here for you to look at. And let's go over here and check out what you can typically expect to get out of a queen of the enchanted variety. You're going to expect, it looks like, Two drones, obviously, but it looks like up to one, maybe if you're really lucky, two of the uh, otherworldly comb. And once again, there's a, uh, an exhibit of what you can expect to get out of a stack of the comb. And moving on to the final bee in this branch called the Supernatural. Uh, it requires Enchanted and Charmed, both of those two previous ones and I've got some here for you uh, to breed and I'm going to need to grab this princess and the supernatural the princesses so I can figure out exactly how long it took me to get this one just for curiosity it took one generation excellent all right and this guy is definitely not a purebred wait a minute that's really close to a purebred actually eh, well not there same output, though. All right. I will put these here for you to look at and compare and whatnot. And let's look at the supernatural output. Obviously, there is the otherworldly comb and two drones that you can possibly expect to get out of this. But there we have some of that unusual pollen, which is made, uh, which is used to make the bee collector's jar. And once again, another example of a stack of the uh, comb run through a centrifuge. All right, now one or more of these bees are used in making uh, bees in another branch called the Aware branch. Uh, so you can get to it by going through there, especially if you've come from there. Also, I, I suppose I should mention, if you do hop through one of these books, you can always come back through a book that's at the other end. So uh, it, it helps you hunt, hop around and, and examine the bees in more detail. Uh, and, and there's plenty of room for you to do some experiments of your own. You can typically do them in the bee houses. Or if you want the effects to be not felt by neighboring areas, you can go wandering off somewhere. If you do get lost, just come back to zero, zero, and that will put you right over there. But that is pretty much all you really need to know about this branch, the Supernatural branch. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful and informative and useful for you. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please do leave them in the comment section below. 
and I will do my best to respond as quickly as possible. Also, if you like this video and what I'm doing here, please feel free to give a like. I do appreciate that a whole lot. Uh, and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe so you know when my next stuff comes out. But this is where I'm going to have to go ahead and wrap up, so thank you once again for watching. This is Thorn of Night, and I will talk to you later.